I'm going to be sharing my personal ranking of the different dog food categories from kibble to freeze dried, air dried. Oh, and before I forget, all of my favorite brands and favorite pet products will be linked below. And be sure to stay tuned until the end because I will be sharing how I feed my dogs. And yes, I am a nutritionist. My degree and background is in nutrition science, albeit in humans, but the synergies and similarities between human DNA and dog DNA is undeniable. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm simply your dog mom muse to inspire curiosity so that you can do your own research, work with your own vet, and make the most informed decision about your pet's food. I personally focus on ones that are the most biologically and metabolically appropriate. I prioritize foods that mimic their ancestral way of eating and respects the fact that they are in fact carnivores. I'm going to take these seven most commonly fed pet foods and rank them based on six categories that are extremely important to me. Let's start off with the most commonly fed pet food, which is kibble. One being the worst in terms of my ranking, three being acceptable, and five being optimal. And I give kibble a high ranking for accessibility and affordability because you can find kibble anywhere and everywhere, and it is the lowest cost, cheapest form of food to feed. Now, interestingly, kibble is still fairly new in the pet food category. It's only about 100 years old and was invented to make a more convenient, lower cost food, which is why I rank the convenience of this so high because you literally just scoop and serve. I give kibble a one, which is my worst and lowest ranking in the carbs and protein category. And I added this category because in order for dogs to be in the most optimal metabolic state, they need to be having a diet that's high in protein and low in starchy and filler carbohydrate ingredients. But in order for kibble to be in those little nugget forms and to be shelf stable for as long as they are, they are made with very high levels of carbohydrates, as high as 30 to 50 to 60% carbohydrate which means that it's very low moisture and the way that dogs get their moisture is not just from drinking a bowl of water but it's through the food that they eat which is why dogs are commonly known to be chronically dehydrated because they're eating a diet that is very low in moisture. I also give it a really low palatability score because it is so overly processed that brands actually spray on flavorings and dyes and sugars to get dogs to want to eat it. Naturally, it's it's not a very palatable or tasty food. And this might surprise you, but the shelf life and the storage capacity for kibble is pretty low because once you open the bag of kibble for the first time, because during the manufacturing process, they've sprayed it with the fats after it's been extruded and cooked at extremely high temperatures, the fat that has been sprayed on the food immediately starts to oxidate, which means that it turns rancid pretty quickly. Once you open that bag of kibble, it's really only good for most brands about two to three weeks. So it doesn't really last very long. And unfortunately, the quality of the ingredients in most kibbles are pretty low. It includes GMO or genetically modified corn, legumes, peas, starchy ingredients, feed grade meats that are actually rejected by the human food industry. So they're using ingredients that you and I wouldn't eat ourselves to put in as filler ingredients. They're also typically adding synthetic vitamins because it's manufactured and processed over and over again. It's an ultra processed food cooked at extremely high temperatures. The nutrients are essentially cooked out. So they have to add these synthetic vitamin packs. It's widely known that kibble is the highest carb pet food on the market. Dogs were never meant to live solely on a diet and food that is very high in carbs. The way that you calculate the carbs very quickly on your dog's food for a good rest, rough estimate is you turn the bag over, you add up the guaranteed analysis percentages, you subtract that from 100 to get the estimated amount of carbs in the food. And as I said, even the highest quality brands are gonna be 30, 40, 50, 60% carbohydrates, which no wonder over half of dogs today are obese and overweight because it's creating such a toxic metabolic state. And there have been studies on this. There's one out of Belgium where they studied 500 domesticated dogs over five years. They compared the dog's lifespan from dogs that ate a homemade, high in meat, low in carb, fresh food diet compared to those that ate an 
ultra processed kibble diet and those that ate a more fresh food diet lived 32 months longer. Then we jump into probably the second most popular food category in the pet space, which is canned food. And I generally like this a little bit more than kibble simply because it has much more moisture in the food and they typically have much more meat. Oftentimes these canned foods are packed with vitamin synthetic packs, which I'm not the biggest fan of uh, because again, it's a very hard to regulate industry. And again, if let's say vitamin D, which has happened in the past is accidentally misregulated and miscalculated in the vitamin pack that they use, your dog could be getting upper level or toxic levels of a certain nutrient, which could cause a lot of health issues or even death. And so that's why I love more fresh, real food options because you get less likelihood of that happening. The palatability of canned food tends to be higher, the convenience of it, kind of depending on if you don't mind kind of scooping out the food and uh, storing the cans is actually pretty high as well. Now let's jump into the fastest growing category in the pet food space for good reason in my opinion, which is freeze dried. And this is essentially where the brand takes all the ingredients to make a complete and balanced meal, mix it together, they freeze it, and then they put it through the freeze drying process, which essentially removes most of the moisture. This makes it more convenient to feed, much easier to store than like a true fresh food diet or DIY diet. And the palatability is extremely high, especially compared to kibble, because it's not ultra processed. They don't alter the texture or the structure of the food barely at all. Now, because this food is typically very high in meat and healthy fats and pretty low in carbohydrates for at least the brands that I prefer, it's going to be a higher price point than a kibble. But I typically find that dogs generally can eat less in terms of the quantity of a freeze-dried high quality food than a kibble because freeze-dried, generally speaking, is much lower in carbohydrates and much higher in protein, which again, mimics their more ancestral way of eating. And it's super easy. All you have to do is add water to rehydrate it, or you could add a little bit of raw goat milk that you get from your local pet shop for an extra protein or digestive enzyme boost. It's extremely accessible. You can find it online. My favorite ones will be linked below. You can find it in your local pet shop. And really, in my opinion, it's probably the next best thing compared to feeding a completely fresh, completely raw food diet. Now, the next category of air dried or dehydrated food is a a little confusing for pet parents because there's a little bit of misunderstanding between what freeze-dried is versus air-dried or dehydrated. Really, the biggest difference between these two categories is going to be the use of heat. Freeze-drying uses very cold temperatures and pressure to create a process called sublimation to help remove most of the moisture, whereas air-dried is using a constant circulation of air to remove that moisture to create a more dry food shelf-stable product. Dehydration is using low heat temperatures temperatures to, again, remove the moisture at very low, slow, steady temperatures to create that shelf-stable bag of dog food. One reason I really like the air-dried and dehydrated food category is because it's generally a lower cost price point than freeze-dried and definitely lower price point than a fully raw fresh food diet. It is a little bit more expensive than a kibble at face value, but again, because it's much lower in carbohydrates and higher in healthy fats and protein than most kibbles, then you're gonna typically need to feed a little bit less. These are even great foods to use as training treats because they're typically very palatable, very easy to use. Both freeze-dried and then the air-dried dehydrated food category have really great shelf lives as well. And typically once the bag is open, because they're not sprayed on with the fats that kibble is, they're generally gonna last longer than a traditional kibble. Then we jump into the frozen category, meaning you find these next few categories categories in the freezer section of your local independent pet store, or you can order online from several brands, and this is growing so quickly, and they ship it to you on dried ice. This is the category of food that I feed my dogs. And again, all the brands, as well as the treats and shoes and everything I use, supplements is all linked below, and we'll talk about it towards the end. But this raw food category is simply just that. It's where brands, or you can DIY it yourself, will take a mixture of raw meat, meaning not cooked, raw organ, raw crushed bone, again, not cooked, um, typically some produce or plant matter for micronutrients, and sometimes some synthetic vitamins as well. They mix it all together to make it complete and balanced. They form it into a patty or maybe a chub, sometimes little niblets, and then you put it in your freezer, 
you defrost it in your fridge, and then when you're ready to feed your dog, you put it out on the counter for an hour or so to let it get to closer to room temperature, and then you feed it to your dog without any cooking, no heat, no pressure. It's literally raw meat, which is the most natural, biologically appropriate, metabolically appropriate way for a dog to eat. Remember, our dogs are carnivores. They have short digestive tracts and they have the optimal pH level in their stomachs to break down any potential bacteria, both good or bad, in their system. And that's why you see dogs eating carcasses on the road, or you have a dog in your backyard that picks up, maybe they went after a bird or a rabbit, unfortunately, which sounds really sad, uh, but don't get sick by it. This is how dogs were naturally made and built to eat. Their ancestral diet never consisted of cooked, especially not ultra-processed, Food. This is gonna have the highest palatability, pickiest for dogs. The shelf life, I give a really low score and the storage of it because you do have to store it in the freezer, then defrost it in the fridge. Once it's defrosted in the fridge and you open it, typically you're gonna to need to feed it within two to five days. So it goes pretty quick and it's obviously gonna be the most expensive. Also keep in mind, the brands at least that I feed and love, there's no fillers, there's no synthetic vitamin. And I do have a video link below more about my thoughts on salmonella and other potential health concerns and risks when feeding a fully raw food diet. But remember, with these diets, you're getting more bang for your buck because you're not paying for, at least in the brands that I love and recommend, you're not paying for filler, starchy ingredients. It's literally just foods that your dogs need and nothing more nothing less. But even within the raw fresh food category, you have different types. You have ones that are more sterilized. So for those people that are super concerned about any bacteria in the food, there are foods that completely sterilize the food, but it's still a fresh food format. And you can even get ones that are gently cooked. And even beyond that, you can DIY it yourself by going to a local farmer's market, for example, and getting the actual meat, raw meat, the raw organs, um, getting raw bone for your dog, and working with a nutritionist to make a DIY home cooked recipe. And don't forget how we feed our dogs is almost as important as what we feed them. And what I mean by that is during mealtime, I'll either work with my dogs on basic cues, training, brain games, or I'll use at least a slow feeder or food or treat dispensing toy like one of these. All my favorites are linked below. But what this does is this slows our dogs down, which first off can help with digestive health, health if you have a dog that burps a lot or is gassy, or if you're worried about bloat, which is fatal, what happens is if your dog is eating out of a regular dog bowl and they're scarfing their food down, especially an ultra processed food like kibble, they can swallow more air. If they swallow too much air, it can lead to a distended stomach, a lot of gas, stomach upset, um, and using something like this or a West Paw Topple with like more of a wet food that you stuff in here, freeze, and let your dog work at it will actually give them mental stimulation and enrichment. You can take this rumble, for example, fill it with their kibble, and then they work to get it out, there you go. And this will mentally and physically tire our dog. Remember, mental stimulation or enrichment can be twice as tiring as physical exercise alone. And if it wasn't for you or I, our dogs would never leave the four walls of their house. So giving them some sort of mental challenges can help tremendously with any behavior challenges that you might be having. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you click this subscribe button and you turn on the notification bell because I'm going to be diving deep into specific brands that I would or would not feed my dogs. Comment below what brands you'd want me to review because part of this Rachel's reviews or Rachel's rankings, I'm gonna go deep. I'm gonna be completely honest and transparent. And remember this, as I said before, whatever you feed your dog today, I know that you're doing the very best that you can. Every dog, every situation, every household is different. So what I would like to do is talk more about what you can do to boost the bowl if you are feeding a more processed diet. Because remember, I used to be there. So click the video right here and I'll talk about that. Or if you want to learn more about food categories and foods I love for my dogs, click the video right here. And I hope you have a beautiful day, goodbye.